What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm your host, Mike Cam. We are here in Elizabeth, New Jersey today with my boy, Manny Cabo. So if you've listened to this show before, you know that the intro song is crazy by Manny Cabo. (laughs) And now we're in Manny Cabo's house. Somehow I got invited here, um, stole the song. Now I've invaded his home. But uh, Manny, welcome to the show. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having me, man. It's yeah. weird, you know. You're introducing me to your show. It's my house, but you know what? I figured let's make it intimate, bro. Yeah, right. You know? well, Plus, I like you. That's a good thing. Well, that yeah, that helps. <laughs> I mean, if you didn't, then we'd have a big problem. Yeah. I just like showed up in your house and came through your back door. Um, but uh, no, I'm really excited. I really appreciate you having me here, and I've messaged you a bunch of times of and like thanked you so many times for letting me use "Crazy," which right now is my favorite Manny Cabo song. But I'm sure as we kind of progress into the next year, which we'll get into Mm. in the second segment, um, that might change. Right. Uh, We'll see. We'll see. But Crazy's got a special place in my heart. But anyway. Listen, I appreciate using it. You know, it's cool for me, too, because of what you're doing. You know, you're representing the Garden State, me being from Jersey. So it's a good mix. Yeah. All right. So so let's learn a little bit about you. So Manny Cabo, born and raised in Jersey, right? Right. Yeah. So let's let's kind of go through like early Manny Cabo days and then kind of how life rest and we'll, and we'll do all that. Yeah, absolutely. So I was born in Newark, New Jersey. It's, uh, what is it? St. James hospital. Okay. Uh, lived in Newark in the, um, Sanford, you know, the South orange Avenue. Yeah. You know, now yeah. it's kind of like a war zone there, but right. growing up, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. So I lived there for about five years and then I migrated over here to Elizabeth and I've been here ever since. Yeah. Um, bought this house probably in two, what is it? Uh, 1995. Wow. So it's and been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. No. <laughs> I had to do that. Yeah, I know. Come on, I'm sure it's going to happen again at some point <laughs> over the course of this episode. But um, yeah, I've been here ever since. And believe me, there has been, uh, there's been a slew of events that have transpired in Elizabeth. But yeah, yeah. this has been my home. You know, every time I, uh, I'm i on the podcast, like, well, where are you from? I'm a Jersey boy. You yeah. know, what exit? You know, we've heard that a million right, times. Yeah. You especially with all your, you know, know. your episodes. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. Like, I, I mean, I grew up in Pequannock and then moved up to Sparta. And mm. Sparta basically like has no exit. Like, you got to go <laughs> on all the way out on 80 and then go right. all the way up 15. And then you're in the sticks and That's everyone's out. like, what exit are you? And I'm like, I have no idea. Like we don't even come close to it. That's the out there, man. Sparta. Yeah. Good yeah. baseball out there too. Right. I remember. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm in Morristown, which is, you know, a little bit different, but, yeah. um, but yeah. So anyway, so, uh, the music background. So mm. obviously like you didn't just like lay down crazy and like, that was it. And then I was like, Oh, I found this. You know, I was lucky. Song. I woke up one day. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, crazy. I laid it down. I was like six. And uh, <laughs> yeah, amazing. Like a prodigy, a child prodigy. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. So let's kind of go. So I know you're a baseball guy. We talked about that on my other yeah, show, yeah. The Morning Spotlight. We won't get too deep into that, but that's one of the things that we have in common. Sure. Um, but, you know, you grow up, you're playing baseball. Was music always a part of your life growing up? Yeah, you know, it was always like in the ambient, you know, it, was, it underscored my life because I love music uh, growing up. I remember sitting, I tell the story all the time. It's very surreal, especially after losing my dad, uh, lying on the floor in my living room in, in, in uh, Elizabeth. And he'd have this old German Grundig stereo, all the vinyl. Hence, yeah. you know, that's why I have so much vinyl here. Right. I can't let go of it. And he would play the Beatles. Uh, he would play tango. He'd play Latin folk music, Motown. Uh, I had a pretty steady dose of, you know, this eclectic background of music. And that's where it all started. You know, slowly as the years elapse, he introduced me to the drums, yeah, of course, and I loved it. Right. And uh, we and had that was an, like that was like your original yeah. thing, like because obviously yeah. you know now singing has kind of become, yeah. I mean maybe I don't know. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Like the Manny Cabo thing, yeah, like Manny Cabo's a singer, right. but that was like drums were like the original thing that you kind of exactly were involved in with music. Right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I did that for ten years prior to you know played in little cover bands here, little garage bands as yeah. we used to call them, right? And it was fun, but uh, on occasion you'd find me doing some back vocals. And it was cool because one day we were doing this gig. I can't remember. I think it was at Kane, Kane University. Yeah. Right um, around the corner. I yeah. Just passed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was going to Scene Hall at the time. I actually missed my my uh, final exam to play this gig. I just wasn't happy. I was a terrible <laughs> student. You know, I, I flew by the seat of my pants when it yeah. came to that. But And uh, I started singing and nobody laughed. They're like, if anything, they're playing, they're looking back like, where the hell did that come yeah. from? You know, <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> right. Yeah. And I developed this affinity to be the front man, you know, yeah. not for attention, but I just really felt comfortable 
behind right. the mic, which yeah. is why I do what I do now and, yeah. you know, being on The Voice and everything. But it wasn't always that way. Yeah, drums was my introduction into the musical space, which right. is cool. Yeah, no, very cool. And I know you glossed over The Voice, and I know mm. we, like, that's been beat to death with you. If you want to, to learn more about that, just type in Manny Cabo The Voice, and you can see. And it's it's epic. But we won't get too deep into that. Yeah. Uh, La Voz, I just have to say La it. Voz. Now I know how to say it. And that's that's actually pretty good. Say it again. La Voz. La Voz. Very yeah. good. Right. Very good. And you know, the first time that you came on my other show, I said Lavaz, and you were like, bro, oh. dude. All right, we're done with this interview, man. <laughs> That's how long it lasted. It was literally like 15 minutes. But um, but yeah, so uh, so you know, you have the voice, you do La Voz, um, yeah. and then but you do so many other things, which is mm. one of the things that I think is so interesting about you is that like you're not just like the music guy, like we were talking about before, like it's the, the photography, the yeah. podcasting like everything else that kind of goes, the fashion stuff, everything else that kind of goes into being creative. Mm. And that's one of the things that I really like about you as someone that is, you know, I mean, I'm not to toot my own horn, but I feel like I'm kind of creative. <laughs> and you uh, are, man. Yeah, sure. But, um, but I, I like some, I like that stuff too. So let's, let's kind of like, like unpack some of those other things that you're doing yeah. and those things that you kind of have going on. Well, you know, and today you already know about my photography. I had to, you know, push this thing up an hour because yeah. I'm leaving for Nashville. And uh, I do a lot of artist branding photo shoots. And photography is another thing that my dad introduced me to back, oh, my God, when I was in, uh, actually, when I was in high school. I was going away to college on baseball scholarship. And, uh, you know, I've always enjoyed taking pictures. I, I loved, I used to revere watching my dad when we used to go to Puerto Rico. And he would photograph the landscapes. And yeah. He was so patient photographing sunsets. And. I'm like, this is amazing. And so one day I snapped the shot and my dad was very particular about his equipment. Hence why I take care of everything. He right. was always very meticulous, you know, never dropped anything. And I snapped a picture and he goes back and back in the day, we didn't have, you know, this immediate gratification. We had film, we yeah. had rolls of film. Yeah. Yeah. So when he got the, the images back, he's like, and I knew it. And I was like, Oh, he's going to yell at me for touching his camera. And he looks at the images. He's like, Ooh, I didn't take this. Yeah. You take this. And I'm like, uh, that depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I don't know how to answer hey, that. Right? What do you want to hear? Exactly. <laughs> and he loved it. And soon enough, like a couple of weeks later, he gave me my first Minolta X700. Okay. And the rest, as they say, was history. I yeah. started taking pictures in college. And then uh, after I tore my rotocuff, that was the end of baseball, came back at Scene Hall, became the photo editor. So that's when I actually felt that that bug that bit me. Yeah. Just take it further. You know, I started right. going to Madison Square Garden, photograph our games at St. John's. Yeah. Uh, back in the day when it was called Brendan Byrne Arena. Remember yeah, yeah, those yeah. days? Yeah. And it was just so much fun. And then my sister was a model, so I started photographing models. And it just, I don't know, it, it just developed. It was like a stages yeah. of development in my life with right. photography. And now I double down on just artist branding. Yeah. As a musician, I could bridge that gap. Exactly. You know? So yeah. it makes sense working for record labels and magazines. I know what they want, and I also do it for me. Right. And the reason why Nashville... Duh, it's yeah, Music duh. City, right? Exactly, yeah. It's oversaturated musicians, but they love that New York fashion edge. Yeah. And that's what I bring to the table. I just, right. I take great pride in my artistry. And, and not to sound pretentious, but I I was born an artist. It is what it is. Yeah. I, I can't do anything else. I'm right. just unhappy. But whatever it is that I do creatively, whether it's podcasting, whether it's singing or photography, I just go all in and it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. You know, you know that feeling. No, no. Yeah. That's why I like, I like doing this. I mean, this, you know, I'm not getting rich off doing greetings. <laughs> not, yet, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Much, much to the uh, <laughs> you know, surprise of all everybody that listens to this show, which is an ample audience. But right. I, you know what I think is interesting too, because like you've kind of, you found yourself in this world of like music mm. and now you've kind of taken all your creative outlets and kind of spread them out over yeah. all those different things, whether yeah. it's, you know, artist branding with the photography, obviously your own music, which we'll get to in a little bit yeah. uh, in the second segment. And then, you know, doing all the stuff with the podcast, Mojo for Musicians. Could you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, you know, and again, I seem that every time I mention anything creative, it's always directly related to my dad. Yes, yeah. my dad, you know, before, before he left this planet, um, he said, you know what, you should do something great something different with yeah. your music. You know, you have a great message, you know, you're bilingual, you could do it in both too. And, and I started Mojo for musicians because it allowed me to be the voice of so many musicians that don't have one. Right. Or anybody yeah. for that matter. And not to mention it was gratifying because I get to showcase artists and I get to showcase people in the, in the industry and how I overcame certain hardships, you know, a lot of information. I educate my, my ecosystem. So I felt that I, that certainly upheld 
what my dad told me to try to do. Yeah, and sure. I think I've been very successful because I'm clear on my message. Yeah. And yeah. that's to be the source of inspiration for musicians. And I think that's very important, especially when you're talking about branding, because you just mentioned something that I have been battling for so many years. It's this constant crossroad that I get to, like, should I double down on my photography, my music, right? My podcasting. And what I realized was if I keep my message clear, yeah, you know, because a confused mind never buys. Right. right. If I keep my message clear and keep it consistent throughout all of my backgrounds, then it makes sense. Yeah. So that's exactly what I did. In photography, I just focus on musicians. On my podcast, I focus on musicians. Obviously, music speaks for itself. Yeah, sure. So it makes perfect sense. And that's yeah. why I'm really happy doing what I'm doing and where I'm going. Yeah. So in the second segment, we're going to get a little into the kind of like future yeah. stuff that Manny Cabo has coming out. So yeah. can we talk about like maybe some of the significant accomplishments that you're proud, like you're most proud of over the last, you know, your career in these creative spaces, you know, cause obviously like crazy's your best song yeah. because that's why I'm <laughs> maybe it. a little biased. Yeah, right? I'm definitely biased, but um, you know what? Like I, my favorite part of crazy mm. and this is just, you know, from, from my end is, and what I use at the end of every show mm. is the end of crazy, which is like the, whoa. And then it's just like that, like, you know, like really hard driving towards yes. the end. Oh yeah. my God. Like I, like I stop every time I'm editing an episode, I stop and I listen to like I, that. I like this guy. End. I like this that guy. Ends. It's amazing. I mean, <laughs> if you've never actually made it to an end of an episode, you probably should. Cause it's my favorite part of every episode. Um, uh, well, let's talk about some of those kind of things. So like yeah. people can kind of like know the, you know, obviously, like you have a lot of significant accomplishments, like we mentioned the voice and Lavos and like all the yeah. other things that you've done. Um, but maybe some things that you personally you're most proud of as, as some of the things that you've accomplished and created. I think the biggest thing uh, I'm very grateful for is becoming a voice, especially, you know, I've won awards for anti-bullying, anti-hate, anti-suicide, you know, with where your words and hate has no home here. But also, I'm pretty proud of the fact that uh, I became a pretty cool songwriter. Yeah. You know, and the caveat was, you know, I wanted to move to Nashville. And that's exactly what I did. You know, Music City is the songwriting capital of the world. Right. So that's one of the areas where I felt I needed to strengthen. And with that came the release of multiple songs, you know, Crazy. And then, uh, of course, you know, what I'm working on right now, which I'm really excited about. I think going forward with everything that I've done, I've made my mark. Yeah. And I've done what I've wanted to do. I've established myself as a pretty decent musician, but I think where I'm going based upon all the, um, the hardships that I've been through, uh, the learning experiences that I've had with, with multiple people in the industry that I've been privy to deal and work with, I know that my future efforts are going to be tenfold right? because of all the accumulation of knowledge that I've acquired. But with respect to my accomplishments, man, I, I can't really pick one. That's that's a loaded question. Yeah. But well, you know what I liked about how you answered that? And I think that's like really what really sums you up. It's just like, it's not necessarily like, hey, Crazy was a great song and mm. Mike Cam uses it on his podcast. So it's obviously like this amazing song, mm. which it is. It's like the other things that you do for like the community that you kind of have surrounded yourself mm. with and created on your own. Yeah. You know, like I think that's that to me. And that's what I was like, almost like expecting you to answer. I kind of like softballed one up for you um just because like that's that's really what it is i mean yeah. like that's why i like you and that's why i wanted to kind of like it when i was kind of looking through new jersey musicians to use as like kind of the you know the first thing people hear you know obviously like there's plenty of new jersey musicians that people yeah. have heard of before. of course of course and obviously i know you so that helps um but like <laughs> You know, that was one of the things that I liked about you because you're just so community driven. And that's what this show is trying to be all about is yeah. like the community, different communities. Yeah, I love know? what you're doing, man. Yeah. That's why it, there's this great synergy here, you know, and it's kind of serendipitous when you think about it yeah. because very few there, you know, I have to turn down a lot of podcasts because unfortunately you can't say yes to everything. There's right. only so many hours of the day. Yeah. But for those that really are doing something great for the community, you're bringing awareness, helping out business owners, entrepreneurs within the state. And I love that. So, and I'm humbled that you asked yeah. me, you know, I just, you know, sometimes people are like, well, dude, you've done so much. I'm like, I'm just Manny from Elizabeth. I'm just a ball guy with a mic at the end of the day. But yeah, right. Apparently what I do, um, you know, resonates with many Yeah, and I'm just grateful for that yeah. because there's a lot more coming and, uh, I, I it's certainly imperative for me to continue to assist and empower my ecosystem of artists, not just here, but globally. Right. Cause it's tough, man, especially after, you know, uh, COVID yep. all the limitations canceled tours. I'm there cause I'm in the trenches with them. I yeah. know what they feel. Sometimes I want to crawl in that little corner and cry. But I can't. I yeah. got to keep making music, yeah, you know? Yeah, you just can't stop. 
So, and I appreciate the question. It's that I, there's so many layers and so many things that I still want to do that I'm just incorporating the gifts that I've managed to cultivate and just spread them across. I, and I know that's like kind of taboo. You don't yeah. spread yourself thin, but I can't help it. And I think they all complement one another with respect to what I'm trying to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. So we're gonna take our first break of yeah. this episode. Uh, and then we're going to get into the stuff that you have coming up. Sure. There's, you know, we'll, we'll tease it a little bit, but there's some music, there's some writing and all that kind of stuff. So we're very excited about that. But uh, this is the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. We are here in Elizabeth, New Jersey today with my boy, Manny Cabo. I'm Mike Ham. We'll be right back. It is time for today in New Jersey history. The New Jersey Fish Commission stocked brook trout for fishermen for the first time on April 25th, 1879. The New York Times reported that this sport has begun here in good earnest, and a good day sport may be had anywhere in this part of the country. And that is Today in New Jersey History. All right, we're back for segment two of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I am, of course, Mike Ham. We're here in Elizabeth, New Jersey with Manny Cabo, uh, the voice of... No, well, I'm actually the voice, but you're like the, the theme, you know, the, the, the driver. I'm just the sidekick, bro. Yeah, you're like, yeah, you're my side. You're the Robin to my Batman and Greetings from the Garden State, which I love. Um, but uh, so in the first segment, we kind of learned a little bit about your background, all the things yeah. you have going on. So people can kind of learn a little bit about you. If they yeah. don't know you already, they should. Um, you know, so now I want to kind of get into, I know you have some stuff coming up this year, mm. um, you know, an album that's kind of going to be like released over the course of this year, yeah. I think, um, and a book too. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the album first, because obviously like, you know, you're a music guy and that's obviously a music thing. So why don't we talk a little bit about that and all the stuff you have coming up and kind of like, you know, what people can expect from these songs that you're releasing over the next year? No, man, that's a great question. It's one of those things where I was a little bit ambivalent, right? Because uh, I wanted to release an album. And after some serious counseling, you know, uh, with Damien Keys, and, and I don't know, for those of you who don't know, he's a huge music guy, has his own academy out in, in the UK, and Rick Barker, who was Taylor Swift's manager. And, you know, acquiring so much knowledge from those two beasts in the industry, I realized that I'm not going to do an album. Uh, I've got eight incredible songs and four already in the works after that. So, I'm going to release one song. This is my commitment and my promise to my community, right? To my fans and my supporters. I'm going to release one song every six weeks for the next year. Yeah. And it's, that's a tall order. Yeah. Because there's so much marketing, you know, right. for every release, you got to have at least a 30 day game plan, you yeah. know, micro content. It's just, it's overwhelming. And thinking about it, just, uh, I find myself being exhausted, but that's what I want to do because I want to keep that momentum. You know, I put a lot of work into this music and, you know, my, my co-writer and partner and uh, Dave Rico, multiple and countless hours in the studios. I want to make the best music possible that I know I can make. Yeah. But it also it requires some significant marketing behind it. So I definitely want to yeah. incorporate all those elements to really release something that's, I shouldn't say perfect because there's no such thing, but at its optimum point of value. Yeah. Right? What was the song that you released last year? I don't know why I'm forgetting it. Uh, uh, Way Down? Way Down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just remember seeing like that one and how much... Cause that was around the time we recorded yeah. our episode of the other show, which that's, is, that's right. You know, that's I, right. I, you know, I know you mentioned in the first segment that you've had to say no, but you said yes to me twice. So <laughs> I feel flattered. Um, but, uh, but I just remember like how much, I mean, still even like you're still putting stuff out for yeah. like, that particular song. And now you're going to do like basically the same thing. Every you know, it's funny. I put way down during hurricane Ida. Yeah. And it, at first, I'm like, oh, man, I just released this song. And one day later, I get hit yeah. with Hurricane Ida. It was brutal. I couldn't really market it. Right. The only way I was marketing it is was through the the, the rubble and through the uh, – it was just a, a dark time for yeah. me. Because you got you got crushed. We can talk about that now. You, you yeah. got crushed during Hurricane Ida. Yeah. Right? I mean, this where we are sitting here, yeah. this was full of rubble. Yep. Water, we had about uh, – if you see the frame back there, since we're going to have some visual reference – Yeah. We had close to 12, 13 feet of water. My yeah. basement studio was gone. Right. Water was up here. We lost so much stuff. And with that being said, I spent a lot of time reflecting like, wow, we're pretty lucky. Because yeah. I honestly thought we were going to have to get helicoptered out of this place. There's yeah. FEMA canoes up my street, cars floating. All oh, I lost everything. Right. What, 25 years of my livelihood? Uh, $80,000 worth of equipment and, you know, photography, podcasting, music, that yeah. adds up pretty quickly. So right. it was pretty devastating. But in the midst of all that, I released Way Down. And it was actually the best thing that could have happened to me. Yeah. 
because Way Down is a song about resilience. Right. Right. And I wanted to write that song for the sole purpose of elevating someone, you know, who comes to that crossroad, yeah. who, who embraces that fear or that doubt or that skepticism, you know, the criticisms, because I've been there. So it was one of those songs to kind of like shield off that negative energy. And coupled with the fact that I was extremely transparent with the people on yeah. lives, I was doing lives in the same pair of pants, right. shorts. I had no clothes. Yeah. I remember watching those. Like it, you were like in, you know, showing your basement, like out yeah. front, like with everything, like, you know, all your shit out yeah. front on the front lawn. Not you know. to mention we had TV at, listen, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an artist. We yeah. love media attention, <laughs> but when TV yeah. Al Jazeera and the Associated Press are in your house, you know, that can't be good. No, no right? definitely not. So, um, it was, it was devastating, uh, to use the accurate word, but I'm still here. You're right. And you know, one of the things that I did, I pivoted at that moment because I started to be grateful for the things that were still here. Yeah. I was, I still had life and with life comes possibility and people totally embraced me and my vulnerability. And that's a superpower for many people. They don't even realize that. Yeah. Just be yourself. Right. Not everybody gets to see a rock star. I don't have to be like the, you know, nails painted rock guy, you know, star, yeah, you know, that's not like, that can't be me. Yeah. And it's impossible to be someone that you're not 24 hours a day. It's exhausting. Right. We all know that. Yeah. So that release really propelled me and uh, sedimented that relationship with my audience, which was great for me. Yeah. And it goes to show you, though, uh, I'm very big on sustaining relationships. You know, my right. supporters are everything to me because they sustain my career, exactly. essentially, right? So yeah. I got to cater to them. It's, right. it's, that's the least I can do. And they came through, man. It was a GoFundMe. They came through. They helped me uh, significantly, my family and myself. So we're really grateful. And that song marked a really significant turning point in my life. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I hate to say it, but I'm grateful for that experience. Right. Because you get to truly appreciate what really matters in yeah. life. You, you, I think you learn, like, kind of like what you're saying, you learn a lot about yourself, too. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, you know, obviously the community as well, but, like, yourself, when your back's up against the wall, yeah. like chips are down, like, you, you know, you got to see what, what you're all about. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know. That's, that's, an, that's an understatement. I right. Mean, I, I, I honestly didn't know what I was going to do, but that wasn't my problem. My main concern and the duty that I had as a father, as a dad, as a son, is to persevere, right. be the rock of Gibraltar, even though inside I was dying, yeah, right. you know, because they couldn't see me break down because then, you know. Right. The whole system breaks down. Exactly. Yeah. And it was rough, but as the adage states, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Yeah. And that certainly was uh, what had transpired that, that week. Actually, yeah. I should say five months, but, you know. Right. So, I mean, everything after. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. Um, so uh, I know we got off track, but we were talking about the album. Yeah. So let's go back to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I forgot where we were. No, no. I was going to say, instead were, of dropping the album, yeah. I'm going to release one single for the next uh, nine months right. consistently, because okay. I, I definitely want to have that constant flow. You know, it's audio is a different means of consumption. Yeah. You know, you don't need to really stop what you're doing. You could work out with it. You could be driving in the car. Uh, so I definitely want to tell my fans that I'm here and I'm stronger than ever. Yeah. And the music is getting better and better and better. Cause I'm still growing and developing, you right. know, as the years lapse, as technology gets a little bit more robust, there's a lot more things that I can do now with my creativity and I'm excited, but you have to have the right team to do it. I'm yeah. really grateful for the people that have worked with me on this album. You know, the David Brownings, um, you know, Earl Cohen's, these multi Grammy award winning people, Dave Browning worked with Katy Perry, NFL, CC Winans, David, my guitar player, producer. He's got so many amazing things coming on. And that song way down was also right now got acquired by the North American rugby league as okay. their soundtrack. So I'll oh, be performing awesome. three, the, uh, my main performance during three of those games that nice. are here internationally. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, man. They're, no, they're loving really the cool. vibe of the song. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, listen, I love your vibe. That's why you're here. Uh, or that's why I'm here. <laughs> right. Because I'm in your home. Um, but, I, see, I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the book. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because we, I mean, yeah. when we talked about on the phone, you told me about the album, you played me a song. So I, I know what some of these songs sound like. Everybody else is going to have to actually wait to have uh, hear them come out. Um, but we didn't really dive into like what no, the book no. was all about. So I'd love to hear kind of like. Because it was relatively fresh. That's what we yeah. didn't touch upon it. Right. I was waiting for it, you know. Uh, everything to get finalized, but it's definitely a huge accomplishment. Writing a book in itself is definitely something that, you know, you should be proud of oh, if yeah. you're doing it. 100%. It's huge. Yeah. And not that I've been putting it off. It's just, it wasn't the right time. You know, I, have, I had a lot to say, and this won't be the first book or the last book I should say. Yeah. Uh, it's called soul. And it's essentially about these moments in life where you think, you know, where you're going, you think this is what you want. 
And then very similar to what happened to me in my baseball. That's that's the only thing I want to do. And then I tore my rotocuff. Now what? Yeah. So sometimes, just to sum it to sum it up, sometimes the universe gives you this cosmic two by four. <laughs> Right. A little yeah, moment of awakening. Yeah. And the book is essentially about pivoting. Right. Sometimes you're coerced to pivot, but it also embraces the agony that we feel when we feel that our world is crumbling, yeah. you know, in front of us. But then these miraculous things happen. You realize, wait a second, I have a bigger calling right. because of this. Yeah. And then you start becoming grateful for what transpired, for what you thought was a calamity. Yeah was totally the opposite. Right. And that's essentially what the book entails. And it's going to do very well with my female readers, especially, you know, I'm very big on women empowerment. It just so happens that it, it was, it fit perfectly for the role of a female. And I've got very, uh, very large plans with this book. Hopefully it becomes a bestseller. And from there, I'd like to launch two other books. Okay. Of course, it's all about empowering and sure. motivation. You know, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. all about, man. Right. But not to the point where, you know, it, it's Manny's ways, the highway, you have to do this. No, it's embracing this uniqueness that we all have to offer this world. Yeah. So I'm really excited to where this is probably going to just catapult me to the level where I want to go. Plus, it builds your brand, you know, and, right. and, and it's directly in, in correlation with what I stand for. Yeah, exactly. Which is never giving up. Yeah. You know, yeah. embracing the perseverance within right. us. Yeah, that's that's really cool. And and is there like a release date on that yet? Not yet. Uh, we're waiting. As a matter of fact, he's actually in have Costa Rica. Have you written Rica. it already? Yeah. Like you're oh, done. it's done. It's done. The preview's done. The artwork is done. You're gonna dig it. And uh, you know what? I might have to give you a signed copy too. Oh, being I mean, that you're in your house, right? Gonna, you're I'm in not, my house, so yeah, I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm no, excited. Yeah. I really am. All kidding aside, I'm really excited about it. It's a big accomplishment, but more importantly, I'm glad with what I know it's going to do with the world. It's gonna bring a lot more confidence. Uh, a lot more of that chutzpah yeah. that we're all looking for, you right. know, good energy from yeah. the book. And that's, that, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah. No, I love that. All right. So we're gonna take our second break, last cool. break of this episode. That, that was amazing. I can't wait for these things to come out. <laughs> um, so last break of this episode. So we're here in Elizabeth, New Jersey with Manny Cabo. Mm. This is the Greens from the Garden State Podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We will be right back. It is time for your New Jersey fun fact of the day. Did you know that New Jersey, with 7,420 square miles, ranks 46th in land area in the United States? And that is your New Jersey fun fact of the day. All right, we're back for segment three and our final segment of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm Mike Cam. We're here in Elizabeth, New Jersey with Manny Cabo. Uh, so in the first segment, we learned all about your background. Not all about it, but, uh, you know, a good cliff notes version of Manny mm -hmm. Cabo's background. Second segment, we learned about the album coming out and that will be released over, you know, uh, the course of a year. Yeah. And then the book that you have coming out called Soul, which, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll put up a release date once you post that. Then yeah. we'll help kind of share that out. But um, the last segment, I, I you know, it was kind of going back and forth between what we were going to talk about in this last segment because... This is kind of the first one of a few that we'll do soon right. of kind of like spotlighting people that live in Jersey. Mm. Um, so we have a couple more coming up over the rest of the year. Awesome. Um, but this one was a great one to start with because of the influence that you've had on the show already. Um, so I appreciate that. But uh, sure. let's let's talk a little bit about like growing up in Jersey, mm. maybe not musically, because we were talking about offline about how like musically, you know, it's not like Bruce Springsteen. I got my Bruce Springsteen hat on. I know. I see that. Um, but like Bruce Springsteen is not really like your vibe you know like yeah. it's not necessarily like the <laughs> same type of music yeah 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 um but uh maybe like culturally like growing up in jersey like yeah. how, how do you think that's kind of influenced you if it has at all it certainly has because i mean i'm you know this is the urban life yeah you know we've got a pretty it's a melting pot of all types of music here you know it wasn't just one-sided i'm i grew up a rocker Right. You know, my first introduction to the Beatles, that was it. I didn't look back. Yeah. But because of my background as a Hispanic, I appreciated all genres of music, especially all the different types of inter instrumentation. And where I live, Elizabeth, you know, there's a pretty wide variety of, you know, backgrounds sure. and, and, and races and all that stuff, which is, it's always been beautiful for me. And it, it, it's kind of sad because I realize how much hate there is in this world. And there's so many countries that I would love to visit that, that people shun because of whatever reason. And I'm like, dude, there's beauty everywhere, yeah. man. You know, yeah. it just... So fortunately, because of music, I was able to bypass all the nonsense, kill the noise. Right. And I just embrace all types of music, you know, um, good friends of mine, they were into rock. Some of them love salsa, merengue, you know, uh, Afro-Cuban jazz, which was cool. So I was exposed to so many different genres of music. 
But Jersey, to be honest with you, Jersey never really influenced me with respect to music. Like, and I, I get a lot of backlash here because I'm a Jersey guy, but yeah. I, I was never a fan of Bruce Springsteen or Bon Jovi. But here's the thing. Appreciate what they've done. Sure. They're just um, incredible musicians at right. what they do. They yeah. are monsters at what they do. It's just not my musical vibe. Yeah. But I'm not going to disrespect them for that. Sure. And to be honest with you, I'd love to be in that tier. And my legacy is to be in the realms of like the Sinatras and the Springsteens and the Bon Jovis. Yeah. You know, here's Manny from Elizabeth, some guy that we never knew, but who just puts out great, consistent music with a powerful message. Right. That's what I want to be, you yeah. know. And I've had the luxury of, of playing to sold out arenas. And it feels great. But what I love the most about what Jersey has provided for me is that upbringing, that diverse background, that versatility with respect to appreciate different, um, you know, ethnic ethnicities, I should yeah. say, yeah. Uh, that I, you can't get in, in other parts of the world because New Jersey is like this big, you know, as opposed to like right. Texas or California. We're yeah. so, so overly populated and sometimes I do. I want to escape. I want to move to Sparta. No offense, but it's like in the middle of nowhere. I get yeah. I, nobody bothers me. My right. neighbors like quiet. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, sometimes I crave that. And now since I'm going to Nashville, I, I'm kind of happy. I'm going away from Jersey a little bit, you know, because Jersey has been great, but it's also it, it exposed me to a lot of hardships. Sure. You know, it's not the most embracing state in my personal opinion. That may be different for everyone else. I really don't care. I'm just talking about my perspective. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, you know, my journeys here musically have been really difficult, you know, growing up with my bands. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, club owners abusing, you know, getting ripped off, you know, other bands, jealousies, dumping my microphones in water, stealing my camera equipment. And you know how I am. I've always been the same way. Same j shirt, T-shirt, you know, type of guy that right. loves helping people. Yeah. So uh, growing up, some of my experiences have been, you know, somewhat... Um, Mind boggling. Let's leave it at that. Sure. Use of a better word because yeah. I couldn't explain it. And that's why I kind of developed like this chip on my shoulder, you know, had this ego because everyone thought it was, well, it's Manny's way or the highway. It wasn't like that. Right. I do things from a collective standpoint. Yeah. I want everybody to grow. And I couldn't find that musically here. So that was a big challenge in itself. Yeah. So what I did but was, you know, what I think is interesting about that though is that like musically, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I don't, I'm not in the music world. So I don't really get it. But what I do like about what, one of the things that you said, just to kind of put like a positive spin on the end yeah. of that answer, is the idea that like, you know, like New Jersey, really tiny, most densely populated state in the country. Yeah. Uh, but also one of the most diverse populations yeah. in the country. And I think like just me, I think like if I, I think that that's one of the things that has made me who I am today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like being a, uh, like more worldly, being more aware of like things that are going on with yeah. other cultures. And I, yeah. I think like that, while it may not necessarily like directly relate to like a music background, uh, it, relates to you and that's what i like what we were saying in the first second that's one of the things that i like about you or maybe the second second i forget what it was um about like how these communities that you've helped develop like i would argue and this is just you that like that would not have happened or it would have happened in a different way if you lived in like the middle of nowhere yeah you know what i mean yeah so i think like that's one of the things that's important about jersey is that like those are things that you can't really get in other places. Yeah. There, there are places that you can, you can live in the city, you know, and, and get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I you mean, live... if you're living like in New York city or if you're living right. in Houston, big cities, yeah. you know, there's really no big city here in Elizabeth, yeah. uh, rather in New Jersey. Yeah. We're not known for the big city, right. but there's, there's like this, this tiny segments. Yeah. We have Jersey city, right? right? We have Newark, we have Elizabeth. Yep. We're known for being the big city, very diverse. I never saw color. I, I never saw black and yeah. white and Chinese. I just saw people. You just live. Right. You know? That's you what I was used to. People. Yeah. I just wish that we all here, especially in the States, you know, and this is a blanket statement, especially in the States, I wish we could all be part of this urban community because then you realize how much greatness and how much uniqueness there is to offer. Right. But I can't speak for everyone. Exactly. You know? I can only speak for myself and yeah. my experiences, right. but- I'm I'm very fortunate with respect to that. You know, could I have said something different about my musical uh, trajectory in New Jersey? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I wish I, I wish I lived in Los Angeles or Las Vegas or even Music City. Because I, I when I was in, what? Yeah. So I, five years ago, I lived in Nashville for two years. Yeah. Everyone knew me. I was getting shows everywhere. It was tough to get shows in Jersey. Right. And that's not because it's, oh, it's difficult. You got to be good. It's yeah. just the politics. It's, just different, yeah. it's nonsense yeah. here. Right. Uh, and I'm not the only one that says that. Believe me, a lot of musicians, I, I, 
<laughs> if I told that's you that's why everybody to. here that's a musician moves to Nashville. Exactly. Honestly, like that's that's what happens. And it's a shame because we do have a lot of talent. And I'm not I'm not you know bashing New Jersey, but I do think that things could have been done differently here with respect to the music scene. Back in the '80s, it was great. You know the metal scene was all in yeah, here yeah, but you yeah. know it was it was just that time it was just a little chunk of time in, right. you know in in this whole process and 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 lifespan of Manny Cabo but i i can honestly say that moving forward it has certainly helped me see things differently sure. it has helped me persevere right because yeah. it's those hardships that kind of keep you going that was right. the impetus that sparked wait a second i'm not i'm not going to settle for for anything less than what I know what I'm worth for. So it made me work harder yeah. to get recognized. Right. So that's a good thing. Yeah. No, hundred percent. I think like the other, we were talking about Ida. We talked about like these things that we're talking about now. Yeah. And I think like that's, I think this is one of the things we talked about on our pre interview call is like, that's kind of like the Jersey thing. Mm. Like you got like a chip on your shoulder. You're like, you know, like the work ethic, the toughness, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I think like that plays into it as well. You yeah. know what I mean? Because like, if, you know, if everything was easy, you probably wouldn't have been doing the things that you're doing. Absolutely. Now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so now you've, you've pushed yourself beyond maybe what you thought you were capable of because, you know, you have grown up in an environment where like things were not just being yeah. like, here you go, you know, yeah, you get I a show whenever you want. Exactly. You know, that kind of thing. I sidestepped that fake bubble of self entitlement. Right. That doesn't exist in my world. Exactly. I worked my ass off for everything that I've gotten yeah. and I'm totally appreciative of it. So yeah, right. I, I completely concur with that yeah. statement. 100%. Yeah. So let's, let's also take it into like, we talked about this already, but one of the things that I want to like really drive home so people kind of like understand like yeah. what you're all about is like the communities that you've developed. Yeah. Um, so talk to me a little bit about that and kind of how, you use your influence to kind of help other younger musicians, other musicians. Yeah. Um, and then maybe like how those have influenced you in your own way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think that that's what truly defines me. And yeah. again, we, I have to allude back to what we were talking about the podcast. One of the reasons why I created this podcast is because, you know, the world of music, the entertainment industry is brutal. Yeah. Dude, it will chew you up and spit you out. It doesn't care who you are. And the one thing that I really try to at least counsel my fellow artists out there is, A, be yourself. But with being yourself comes what? Criticisms. Right. You know, the hate. Yep. Uh, the insecurities. You start doubting yourself. And I know I speak from personal experiences. So what I've tried to do is build a community of artists that know that's just a facade. Because when people have a problem with you yeah. personally, it has right. nothing to do with you. Yeah. It's their own voids. Yep. They've got to deal with it. You know, not you, but unfortunately their projections are totally different. We're not all built the same. Right. I take criticisms and they just shrug off, you know, like that whole Jay-Z thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. And um, what I try to do is be the voice for those people. Let them know, just ignore that, you know, and I use the whole uh, analogy of crickets, right? Okay. Crickets are your haters. Right? And if you notice, you're in a field at nighttime, they're all over the place. But what happens if when you get closer to them? Oh, they stop. I like that. They silence. Yeah. I've never heard that before. I like yeah. that. So just pretend that they're crickets. Of course, they're going to talk smack behind your face. But when you have to face them, yeah. and here's, here's the ironic thing. They, they, they immediately quiet. But here's the amazing thing. Even my haters, I've got to get new haters. Because even the ones that did... Now they like me. Now right. they know what I'm all about. Yeah. But the caveat to that is I took the next step. For example, while I was on The Voice, I got an onslaught of negative comments. Who's this guy? You know, yeah. Andy Cabo, he's 45. How dare you compete with 18 and 19 year olds? Yeah. You know, the audacity. And um, the first thing that they tell you at Universal Records, right, is like, just guys, one thing you really have to listen to us here. Don't read the negative comments. Yeah. Don't read the negative comments. What's the first thing that they, they all did? They read the negative comments and a lot of them were emotionally distraught. And so I found myself in my hotel rooms and I'll, I'll land my plane after this one, but I'm making a point. Yeah. I found myself in the hotel room, inspiring these guys. Like, no, you're, you're looking at this the wrong way. Right. Most of those people that are actually, you know, um, throwing shade are the ones that are just jealous because of what you've accomplished. Yeah. You're already winners. Yeah. So from that point, which is why I wanted to, to focus on this, that came my transitional period. Right. That pivoting moment where I decided to be the voice in my community to let people know, no, 
search deep inside, love yourself first, right. of course, you know, and you got to do the work. Everything requires doing the reps, right? So I'm kind of like that trainer, that <laughs> vocal trainer, that yeah. kind of kind, always reminding you, whoa, 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 now, you know, don't let these comments bother you. Right. Don't let it get in the way of your workflow. Don't let it get in the way of your personal greatness. That's essentially what I've tried to build with my community, whether it's my photography, whether it's my podcasting or my music, my yeah. messages right. is very clear. Uh, I'm your encouragement, your words of encouragement. Yeah, I love that. And I've had to deal with a lot of that nonsense in order to arrive to that conclusion. Yeah. But I'm so grateful because, yeah, again, not everybody is equipped to deal with that, that baggage but yep. I managed to take it and convolute it into something amazing right. that will uplift my community. Yeah. No, I love that. And it, this is, I, you know, I don't know why I'm going to tell this story, but we were talking about uh, with uh, Kerry Sullivan, who runs the Jersey Collective Instagram account. It's mm. like uh, 40,000 followers and it just crushes it. Yeah, nice. Um, it's like this photography account of photographers in New Jersey. Right. And they do like every week they do a takeover, you know? And so like every, I did a takeover. I'm not a photographer, but I took pictures and I posted yeah. them up there. and It was great. But anyway, so we were talking about on her episode because she has a book coming out called New Jersey Fan Club. And she was like, I don't know why people, you know, make fun of Jersey all the time. And I'm like, because people love to hate on things that they like can't have. Yeah. You know, like Jersey's got it all, baby. It's a good point. You know, so like they like love to throw stones because people don't like to see people that are doing things that yeah. they wish they could do. Yeah. So they got to bring them back down to their level. And it's right. really cool that you kind of found this way to make people aware that like, they're just, they're throwing stones. Like, well, nobody oh. cares about what you're doing. Nobody cares about your opinions. All yeah. they care about is when their opinions are coming out of your mouth. Exactly. Exactly. And it sucks. Yeah. But you're it's right. Terrible. Yeah. But I mean, if you're going to put yourself out there, like we put ourselves out there yeah. and you know, like, you know, you with all the different things that you're doing and the people that you kind of frequent with, you know, like there's going to be people that just don't like you. Yeah. And they're, they're going to For like no you. reason. For no reason. They're not, they're not going to like worry about the fact <laughs> that like they need to yeah. know like what you're all about or what your backstory is or why you do what you do. They're just going to be like, you know, screw this guy. Well, I'm glad like you, I'm glad that you said that. I don't, I hope you don't mind me interjecting, but yeah. our job as creators is to create. We right. can't be concerned with what the results are. Yeah. Right. You create, if you're happy with it, Release it to the world. It's not your concern what people think about it. Your right. job is to keep creating. Hey, if they hated it, they liked it, awesome. You yeah. know? So I want to remind people of that. You can't cater to the criticisms. No. You are never, I don't care who you are, you are never going to please everybody. It's virtually, if there's one thing that could be labeled as impossible, that's it. Yeah, that's it. You can't yeah. please everybody. As much as you're going to try, no. it just never And it's happen. okay. That's yeah. the beauty of it. Because if we were all the same, it'd be a pretty goddamn boring place to yeah. be at. Right. So yeah, just want to remind everyone of that. Yeah. No, I love that. And then, I mean, this episode is rocked for, you know, <laughs> pardon the pun. Uh, it's but, it's uh, all him, guys. Yeah. It's all, it's, yeah. it's all it's him. Notice so I'm many. looking at both cameras to right. verify both that. Cameras. I can't even see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, all right. So if people want to learn more about you, find yeah. your stuff, find all that kind of stuff, where can they go to, to get it? Absolutely. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Just go to mannycabo.com. Everything that has to do with my world, whether it's photography, whether it's music by podcasting, my releases, you know, I've joined this incredible space at the giraffe tower. NFTs, uh, which I'm really excited about. I think that everyone should look into it, Gary Coyne and Rally and what they've done out there. So I'm excited of where the future holds yeah. for me. No. I know yeah, where absolutely. I'm going, but the wonderful thing about that is where I'm going, I'm also going to take everyone else that's in my community right. and take them to that next level. That's yeah. why it's exciting. So yeah, all my social medias are on there. So mannycabo.com, that's it. And be on the lookout for all my new music. So I'm yeah. really excited. And new episodes. Oh, by the way, I added a new segment in my podcast called the Limelight Lounge. Okay. Where it's it it kind of strays away from my normal workflow where they're usually 45 minutes, 50 minutes, you know, I come in with this uh, um kind of like a monologue of steps and uh, trips uh trips uh like tips and stuff. <laughs> you can take a trip too whatever you want. I'm not <laughs> judging you. I'm not yeah. judging you. Yeah. Right? Uh far away <laughs> lands. But um and then I get into the the segment itself. This is just specifically focusing on the artist, you know, yeah. where I showcase their talent, talk about their hardships, how they overcame. So I'm really excited about that. And I've got yeah. like 10 artists lined up. So it's going to be a cool segment uh, and an addition to the podcast. So awesome. yeah. And the book, of course. Of so. course. Yeah. And like I said, once those things like the music gets released or the yeah. book gets released, we'll like hammer it. Oh, we're on it. The we're State. on yeah. it, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll kind of give like my little boost you know, for all this, he'll stuff bug me like, on. like every day he'll call yeah. me and text like, me. Where's my book, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
you going to send that soon? Uh, you know, send they, it to Morristown. If they were only like the fly in the wall or what really transpires during our conversations. <laughs> Yeah, this is just the recorded segment and stuff that I did not edit out. But uh, so mannycabo.com, yes. that is the hub. Uh, so yep. uh, go that, there. That's and the mothership. Out. That is the mothership of Manny Cabo. And obviously, like people that listen to this show, they know that Manny is the theme song. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, uh, the theme song of the show. And it was so cool to let me uh, use that. Of course, and that was, man. And it's, been the sh- it's been the theme song of the show and will continue to be the theme song of the show for as long as this show exists, which hopefully is going to be for a long time. Um, but uh, so Manny, thank you so much for doing with us, oh, this dude, with us today. It was a blast. Inviting me into your home. Of course. You know, I'm glad you got everything back together. The place looks great. Um, it's very, getting there, man. Very it's jealous of this like workspace that you have down here <laughs> because mine is either like my couch or my bedroom slash office slash gym slash recording studio. Dude, bro, bro, let me tell you, yeah. you, you use what you got. Exactly. You, you know, you should have seen what I was doing prior to all this stuff. Well, I would imagine. Yeah. It was, I was using a stool. Right, I was using a stool and that laptop there that was just salvaged yeah, that, right. and I did all my jobs with used equipment. People let me borrow their equipment. Right. So, what I'm trying to say is, don't ever make excuses for your greatness. You, if you really are passionate about what you want to do, you'll always find a way. Exactly, I promise you that. And if you don't find a way, then do something else because you're not really passionate about right. it. Right, 100, 100. percent So. Um, awesome stuff, yeah, Manny. Man. Again, thank you so much, Always. everybody else. Thank you for listening. La- thank you for listening. Uh, greetings from the Garden State.com is the website. Greetings from the Garden State at gmail.com is the email address uh, of the show. Uh, so if you want to reach out to us, learn more about Manny, happy to connect to you if that makes sense. Um, but uh, thank you for listening. Greetings from the Garden State podcast. Mike Cam, Manny Cabo, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Thank you for listening, and we will catch you next time. Oh.